Shalom everybody and good morning and hello everybody and please invite your friends. Peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today our topic is about one of the amazing miracles of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace upon him. It's amazing. But before we go there, uh, you know, I promised some Muslims to answer their comments. You know, Muslims, it doesn't matter what you show them on the screen. I mean, the only topic they have is if Jesus is God or not. We show them that Muhammad was a fool. It's okay. Jesus is not God. We show them that Allah is a stupid. Uh, okay, Jesus is not God. I mean, it doesn't matter what the topic is. They will go back if Jesus is God or not. Hmm. There is Abdul. He posted a comment. Let us read together. His name is Abbas. He says, request to all Christians. Instead of wasting your time, finding any bad things in Islam. My friend, we could not find any bad thing in Islam because all of Islam is bad. And can you name for me one good thing in Islam? I mean, since when beating your wife is something good? Islam destroy family. Since when having too many wives is a good healthy thing for the family? So if the family is corrupt, even your prophet, he says, you can lie three cases to your wife, to your friends, to your enemy. Who's left? So we are not wasting our time finding bad things in Islam. Islam is bad. And you don't have any answer that's why you are trying to change the topic but he have a request okay instead of wasting your time finding bad things in Islam Muslims kindly focus on your important issues having true faith on true God Almighty that's deep that's deep true faith in the true God if I ask you who is your true God you don't even know who is he all what you know that he is a God his name is Allah he have one leg he have two hands in the right side of him he have a face he have a shin uh, he have five fingers who is Allah focusing in Allah Almighty <laughs> I mean this is the only religion they don't even know who they are worshiping who even if we ask them what is the word Allah not mean they don't know they have no idea even the name is a foreign name, is a stolen name from other religion. Continue. Sometimes say father, and other times say son, and then one more kind of ghost as well. Here you see the Muslims are saying to you, I mean, which one is the God? Is he the father, the son, or the Holy Ghost? You know, we are going to design a God like up to your request. What do you want? Let me open the menu for you. We have pizza with pepperoni. We have pizza with the al pepperoni. We have pizza with ham, and you love ham as a Muslim. And we have uh, pizza with the vegetables and garlic. Which one you want? Oh, I forgot the prophet, he forbid you from eating garlic because angels get offended. So here the Muslim is trying to tell you, we are Muslims, we tell God how he can be. You cannot be this. I am the one who decides for you what to be. Is he God the Father? Is he God the Son? Is he the Holy Spirit? Well, you idiot. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is one God. So how you say, is he, is he, is he? Obviously, you are an ignorant like your prophet. You do not know what we, what we believe. In the same time, uh, your God in the Quran, he keeps saying we. We ask the Muslim, why, is, why Allah he say we? Uh, they say to you, it is majestic. It is more suitable to Allah to be we. <laughs> do you see how stupid this statement is so you just said that it's more suitable to Allah to be more than one person by adding we so your God Allah he wish to be we so he had a fabricated we which is not real if he is one person why he say we oh because he feel like he feel more great I mean, what kind of a silly God, he add he, we before his name to feel better. They say to you, it's majestic, like kings, you know, kings, they call themselves we. That is stupid, my friend. Kings, they speak about the authority they have, right? And supposedly, usually, even the king who is the dictator, still there's people who support him, right? But God is an independent God. He do not need support of anyone. He do not need ministers and army to support him, so to be a king. Another army come, can take this king and make a new king. But when we speak about God, and yet your God, he need we to make himself majestic, 
obviously your God is a silly God. He cannot be one. He is just speaking like any human being. He has the mentality of a human being. And then he says, uh, the God Almighty kindly do not make God a cocktail hybrid, uh, imaginary uh, being work as you want. Here he asks, you know, that the, the funny is, as long as you are talking about imaginary, do you have any description of your God? Mr. Imaginary? No, we do not imagine God. God, he says, to, he, he came to us in the image of a man. So we are not imagining. He came already. What about your God? If we go in the Quran, we will find that your God, he came to Moses as, as a fire. And this is a story stolen from the Old Testament. Question to you. Is your God a fire? I will, you know, I will play silly like you. You know, I will be silly in my questions. As long as Allah, he appeared to Moses in the bushes as a fire. If I speak the language you speak, trying to make fun of what we believe, speaking about the cocktail God, when Allah, he appeared to Moses in the bushes, and he appeared as a fire, was Allah a fire? Or this is a cocktail of God and fire? If you read in the Quran, actually, you will see the stupidity of the Quran and the author of the Quran. As an example here, it says, Did you hear the story of Moses? No, no, we did not hear it. What is it? Tell us. Read carefully. Behold, he saw a fire. So he said to his family, uh, Tarry ye. Well, tarry ye. Okay. I perceive a fire. Perhaps I can bring you some burning brand, therefore, or find some guidance at the fire. Guidance at the fire? Okay. But when he came to the fire, a voice was heard. O Moses, Verily, I am Allah. I am your Lord. I'm your God. Take off your shoes and you are in the holy ground. Okay. Is that a cocktail of God and fire? Or now you will say, well, God, he can appear as he wish. Do you see your hypocrisy? If we go to different verse in the Quran, we will find this. In chapter 27, verse number 8. And here you see uh, the stupid Quran. I mean, you cannot find the story in, in, in any way. I mean, the, the story is all over the place. The Quran is like a book, you know, was in pages. And there's a window next to it, and somebody open, uh, turn on a very strong uh, fan, and they all the pages went all over the backyard, and then the people they collected the pages and put them together, and this is why this book is messed up. There is no connection between verses before and verses after. A person who is flying with the flight of thoughts. So behold, Moses said to his family, hmm? and look how they changed of the story. But isn't this the same story? I mean, if we go to the other chapter, this is a chapter 20. Verse number 10. Okay. Behold, he saw a fire. So he said to his family, I perceive a fire. Perhaps I can bring you some burning branches. Okay. He went to the fire, and then he heard a voice. What the voice said to him? Verily, I am your Lord. Take off your shoes. Okay, hold on. We go to a different chapter. The story changed. Is that the same Moses? Look what happened. The conversation is not take off your shoes. Read carefully. 
Behold, Musa said to his family, I perceive a fire. Soon I will bring you some from there. And some information. Information? Uh, I mean, the information. I like that promotion. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he said to them, Bihabar, he's right. Information, actually. I will give you the news, what, what is there. So, and I will bring you, or I will bring you a burning brand or branches from, you know, from it. Wonderful. So when he came, what the voice said? People, do you see what happened? What the voice said? The voice said, when he come to the fire, a voice was heard saying, blessed are those in the fire and those who are around it. Glory to Allah. Hold on. In the other story, Allah they said to him, take off your shoes. He did not say, blessed is those who they are in the fire and who is around it. Question now to the smart Abdul. Who is the one in the fire who is blessed? Any Muslim? Is that a cocktail of God? If Allah is in the fire, how come it says those who they are in the fire? Who is those? How many? How many Allah in the fire? Hmm? Let us make it more clear because it's, until now it's not really clear for the Abdul. You know, Abdul. I mean, what do you expect? Abdul. I mean, a person who drink camel urine is going to tell us about what is healthy and what is God. Read with me this one. I mean, things is getting more complicated. You ask for it, don't so don't complain. Don't complain. In chapter 28, I mean, look at this Quran, my friend. The same story is all over the place. This is a chapter 28, verse number 30. Hold on. I thought we were reading about Musa's in chapter 20, verse number 12. Hold on. No, no. We were reading about Musa's in chapter 27, verse number 8. Muslims, they cut Musa's, put him in pieces, and scattered his story all over the Quran. But read with me this one. But when he came to the fire, look how the story changed. A voice was heard from the right bank of the valley. Muslims, is that the same Allah is speaking or this is different Allah? How come in every chapter there's different verses and different words and different what he heard and what he saw and what he said? But when he came to the fire, a voice was heard from the right bank of the valley from the tree. Where? From the tree. Okay. In a Hollywood ground. What? Wonderful. Oh, Moses, verily I am Allah, the Lord of the world. Where was Allah? In the tree. And what the first sentence in this story here, Allah, he says to Moses, throw your road. But, so what we will do in other chapters? What happened? He said to him, throw your road, your stick. And it's going to be like a, like a, like a, a snake. But what does this have to do with this and that? In the others, I mean, every chapter in the Quran have different words for what happened. When Moses arrived to the tree, what happened? Allah said to him, I am your Lord Allah. Where is Allah is inside the tree? Okay, why it doesn't say that here? Here it says nothing that he was inside the tree. And doesn't say a voice from the tree and the first thing he said to him take off your shoes this is a chapter 20 verse number 12 verse number 11 verse number 10 12 13 okay then we go to chapter 27 Moses saw a fire 
he came to the fire Allah he said to him from the fire blessed who is in the fire and who is around it so this is the first thing he said to him a true storyteller he cannot even repeat the story of Musa twice correctly and this is how he exposed a fraud Muhammad was in a learning process from the Jews about Musa so each time he learned something he added a new verse that is the whole story and he uh, he heard from the Jews stories which is not really even accurate and I believe in purpose the Jews they used to make fun of him in order to get him busted it's like you say to somebody to see if he's a liar like somebody come to you and he say I know your uh, your son oh so you know like he my son he liked baklava oh yeah he loved baklava but the mother she knew that the son he hated so now she knew this is a smart mother she knew that he is a fraud he is not a friend of her son Muhammad was a fraud and the Jews always they feed him with the stupid information and he put it in the Quran so if I ask you right now if Allah is one and Allah is the one is in the fire why Allah is saying blessed are those in the fire and those who they are around as I know the one was around is only Moses isn't it Moses who came to the tree Hmm? Mr. Cocktail God? What uh, Allah is a... Secondly, if Allah is God, you, you Muslim, you say how God can be inside his creation, correct? Because God, okay, uh, Jesus have a flesh, the flesh he created. So uh, God is inside the flesh which is created. This is the logic of the Muslims. That is impossible. That's impossible for your God, you idiot. However, here we go. Your God is inside the tree. And he considered the tree a holy tree and the ground around it a holy ground and he is saying blessed are those who they are in the fire and those who they are around and then the Muslim they start trying their best to explain who is in the fire so some tafsir said it was the angels where it says that show me go ahead who is around the fire maybe Jibreel uh, show me where it says that isn't it the Quran say clearly that he said to him, I am Allah. So how you say those are the angels? Oh, Moses, verily I am Allah. Okay, so Allah is those in the fire. Do you see it? So how you Muslim, you say Allah is one. Do we have any Muslim? So your logic is very silly, very stupid. Remind me of the logic of your God when he says, how Allah can have a son when he doesn't have a girlfriend. How Allah can have a son when he doesn't have a girlfriend. Well, that's because your Allah cannot have a son without having a girlfriend my God he do not need a girlfriend for his almighty so you Muslims when you call your God almighty where he got this title from because he can how he can I mean have you ever heard of a God he say how can I have a son if I don't have a girlfriend and listen carefully it's not me who is saying the word how can he your God asking he who shouldn't he say how can I oh Allah he is a crazy idiot he see himself in the mirror he spoke to himself so how can he have a son when he has no concert so how you Muslim you call him Almighty and you say if God wanted something he say be is going to be suddenly your God he need a girlfriend in the same time we notice that even in the stupid Quran Mary the mother of a Christ she have no boyfriend and yet she have a son that is a clear contradiction and a clear stupidity clear idiot person who do not know how to answer or to argue or to debate 
because it's impossible for Allah to have a son unless he have a girlfriend. That's mean it should be impossible for Mary to have a son unless she have a boyfriend. And if that cannot be possible to Allah, who is left? Is that a cocktail God? And as long as you are talking about cocktail God, I don't want to forget to mention to you that your God, he said it clearly, if he want to take a partner as a wife or a girlfriend, as a partner, we will take it from ourselves. Question, if Allah is one, how he is going to have sex with us So in less than four or five minutes, we destroy all what the Muslims claim about the oneness of God. And Allah is unique. Allah is a fiction God, a stupid God. He is, this is Muhammad, making fictions about what he called God so people can obey him as a prophet. Muhammad is using what he write in the Quran to earn authority so he can conquer. He is a rapist. He is a criminal. He is like Erdogan. If it had been our wish to take just a pastime, okay, what is the pastime? Change the translator, they will say to you, it is a wife or a son. Okay, we will take it from us. He will take a wife so he can have a son. In the translation, he is saying, surely have taken it from the things nearer to us. Does it say that in Arabic? Does it say that? Absolutely false. Change the translator and you will see how we expose them. But before we go to the translation, where is where is nearest to us, you liars? Cowards. And you speak that we Christian corrupted the Bible. It is you who corrupt your Quran in every single translation. If we change the translator, we will find the following. Here we go. This is Yosef Ali. Let us go to uh, Hilali Khan. Hey Hilali, how are you? Uh huh. Ah, there is no nearest to us. What happened to nearest to us? Is it possible that nearest to us is deleted, or that the translation was a fabrication? Read carefully. We could surely have taken it from us. Okay, us who? Allah want to take a wife from us. See here the Muslim, they can't play the game, say Allah, he say we as a majestic. Because here is going to have sex with us. Us who? He's talking about taking a partner, i.e. a wife. Do you see it? It's your Muslim translation, i.e. a wife. And therefore, he can have a son. So Allah want to take a wife from us. I thought Allah is one of his kind and there's no others. So how the Quran says that Allah, Allah himself saying, I will take from us. Stupidity is amazing. So I hope this Abdul was listening. Oh, yeah, and by the way, he said, the, the, did Jesus go to the bathroom? I show me a reference about Jesus going to the bathroom. However, I wanna show you something. Your God, he go to the bathroom. And not only that, your God, he do ejaculation. He masturbate, he ejaculate. It's not me who's saying that, those are your books. And this is a Muslim, he's going crazy when he see what you Muslims have in your books about your God. Watch. What kind of disgusting nonsense is that? Uh, we can say that the Quran strong... Uh, 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 based is saying that Allah will take a wife from amongst the heavenly beings. This is the most stupid answer ever, because still it's us, you idiot. So if we take it from our the heavenly being, and those are us, that's mean all the heavenly being are the same as Allah, because you say that they are us. When you say us, it's mean our kind. Try something better based. Thank you. Listen carefully to the God who do ejaculate. What kind of disgusting nonsense is that? Uh, 
we can say that the Quran strongly suggests the Quran seems to have a very strong indication that uh, Isa is coming however it is not definitive and it is not conclusive in and of itself Abis hello this is strong <laughs> strong people strong suggestion Pay attention. Just from the language of the Quran and just from the context of the Quran, we give it the presumption, but not the certainty. <laughs> so that's the strong inclin, strong suggestion. Jesus is coming in the Quran. It's not actually anywhere in the Quran, but khair, strong. As for the hadith, this is where, of course, the issue becomes uh, crystal clear. Then the hadith is no doubt now that. Yeah, doubt has been killed. There is no doubt. The number of Sahaba from whom uh, this hadith is narrated is around uh, um, uh, around ten or so. We have Abu Huraira, we have Jabir ibn Abdullah, ibn Masud, ibn Umar, Aisha, Samura ibn Jundub, Imra ibn Hussein, Abdullah ibn Abdul ibn As, Hudayfa, uh, Thawban, and in fact one or two more. Uh, there's a hadith of Ibn Mas'ud. He, he mentioned Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud. First of all, Ibn Mas'ud begins by saying that the Christians claim Jesus. Here you see the liar here saying, yes, he said the Christian claim, but he quote the first part where it says that the Christian claim that Jesus will come after Gog and Magog. And this is stupid because we don't claim that. You, you idiot. Show me where in the Bible it says that this is, you know, this is a, you know, we believe that there's people who they are Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog in the Bible is a location. It's not people. <laughs> so this guy, he's trying to, uh, 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 to fix it. He make it more blind because if the Christians are claiming, so what's your business? And why are you upset? The Christian claiming. And why Yasser al Qadi is saying this is confirmed, this is true, this is a hey. If the Christians are the one, so the Christian is the Mas'ud saying the Christian they claim that Jesus is going to come after this. The rest is your story as a Muslim, where, where Allah ejaculate. And this is why you say we need to question it. If the Christian says that, you don't question it because Christian is their Christian and their, their, this is their faith. But you need to question it, and you are questioning this because this is your faith, your liar. What a shame. Jesus will come back. You see this belief creeping in. But anyway, check this out. Check this out. More interesting people. I want to bring your attention. Hmm. Elaborate detail on the end of time. What's going to then happen is look at all of this. What will he goes through in you know details. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. A wind is going to come. Ya'juj, Ma'juj are going to come. People are going to die. All this stuff. But this is your private statement, you idiot. You are making fun of it? All this is stuff? I love it when Muslims, they make fun of what their prophet said. Those are the signs of the judgment day according to your prophet. So how you say, and all those stuff, make fun. Continue. But then what's going to happen after this utter destruction? Now, this is the hadith. He was saying, Yahya, uh, <laughs> Uh, See, he just said this is a hadith. This is not the Christian claiming. If the Christian is saying something, this is not hadith. Do you notice? If the Christian claiming, the Muslim, they will not say this is hadith. Hadith is something to report. Either Muhammad saying or the campaign of Muhammad or the one who came after, like the important ones, reporting something. They have to be the Muslims in it. And this is why we call it hadith. If a Christian bishop, he said something, that is not a hadith. <laughs> so, and this is what Yasser Qali is saying. This is very true hadith. This is sahih hadith. This is powerful hadith reported by more than 10 very strong, strong. You forgot what you said about strong? Repeat it again. Yasser Qadi, that we can't question with reason put together too many of the Sahaba have narrated it and therefore uh, predominant you know Sunni methodology basically is that so see this is Sunni methodology why you are saying okay I mean look at the madness they try to throw their garbage at us Tawatir uh, ahadith are certain. Yufidul qata. It's not vanni. It's not something that is subjective. It is something that is certain. 
the notion of rejecting mutawatir ahadith simply be uh, 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 black angel said that mufti is a shia that is even make it worse <laughs> Don't, don't make me speak about the Shia now. <laughs> Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he was in Japan in the same time he was in Moscow and the same time he was in Kuala Lumpur. I mean, the Shia, they have way more than the Sunni. So if he's a Shia, I even make it worse. Don't make me go there. If you wear black shoes, your penis will not stand up to Allah. That's what the Shia believe. You have to wear, you have to wear a yellow shoes. Don't take me there, please. But I don't think he is a Shia, I don't know. If you have a video saying that he's a Shia, give it to me. I want to see, because he doesn't sound like a Shia for me. And the supporters are not Shia. I don't know, I mean, I never saw Sunni supporting him. Uh, I mean, Shia supporting him. Because it is not rational, right? That's to me the fundamental uh, difference between this strand of Islam versus the bulk of Ahlul Sunnah or the bulk of Sunni Islam. So now check this out. Check this out. I don't know after I said this. I said if you are wearing the black shoes, your private part will not stand. I am assuming that maybe half of the people watching the men, they were looking at their shoes color. Brothers, I advise you from now on, according to Imams of the Shia, according to the highest authority of the Shia, if you wear black shoes, your private part will not function. It's true. Me, myself, I don't wear any black shoes, I assure you. For security reason, and for the purpose of a practicing boom boom. Because if you wear black shoes, that's it. It's over. This is wisdom, man. So if they are making fun of the Sunni, I mean, don't you have, don't you know what you have in your book? Let us continue. What does the Hadith say at the end? When there's utter destruction, how will this be brought back? Then Allah will say, now, <laughs> I have to translate this, so brace yourselves. People. Translate, translate. Allah will send, there's a fluid from beneath the Arsh, which will ejaculate like the sperm of men. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, every one of you giving me different sector of this guy. So now he is a Maliki. Who care? Who care? I think he's a Sunni. I think whatever people say, I don't care. He's a Muslim. He's a Sunni. Well, I believe strongly he's a Muslim Sunni. But anyway, so Allah will ejaculate. Allah will do what? Allah will do ejaculate. And it's in front of you in Arabic, and he is the one who put for you the line. What is the God you worship, Muslim? How Allah resurrect people from the from the graves, from the dust? He ejaculate. Who is saying that? You. Yasser Qadi confirming that this is a very strong, strong, strong. I am assuming based on this hadith, from now Allah is practicing masturbation for that day. Because he need a lot of ejaculation. I mean, come on, you need to cover the whole earth. And as you know, the earth is round. So Allah, he have to ejaculate for 24 hours because the earth is going like, you know, a circle, like, you know, I mean, bzzz. so in order to shower the whole earth, I mean, you cannot just one time and that's it. It doesn't work this way. Okay. Like the sperm of men. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm whoa, people. Let me repeat. Yeah, look at it for yourselves. Thumma yursilullahu ma and Allah will send down on earth, shower down on earth, fluid from beneath His arsh. So beneath His throne, there's a collection of fluid, which is kamaniyir rijal which is like the sperm of men. <laughs> Actually, the first translation he said is more accurate. He says, Yunni, Allah will ejaculate. He, he is the one who used the word ejaculate. So Allah will ejaculate that ejaculation is a liquid 
like the sperm of men. Who is using that term? It's not this guy in the video. It's the hadith saying that. The ejaculation of Allah is the same as the sperm of men. So it's a sperm. And what is the purpose of this ejaculation? Resurrection. A collection of fluid, which is kamaniyir rijal, which is like the sperm of men. <laughs> this is going to shower down on the globe. And what's going to happen is this is going to then give birth to uh, to once again life. So sperm. <laughs> so for that, people, I had to had to. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Blizzard. Huh? Making fun of the penis of Allah, a'uzu billah. Those Muslims are making fun of the, his holy penis. And he is trying to cover himself by an umbrella so the sperm of Allah will not fall upon him. I don't know, you are a believer. You should not only be happy to the sperm of Allah. I don't want to go extreme with my words, but I think you should be like opening your mouth. So you get the holy sperm inside you, my friend. This is religion. And the guy in the comment, he's saying to us, which one is your God? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then he said, this Jesus go to the bathroom. Your God have a penis. That's why you keep calling him he. And as you see, he ejaculate. And as you see, he want to have a wife and a wife from us. So let us go with you. If your God don't have a penis, he will have a wife from us using what exactly? His tongue? Hmm? When your God saying, if we want to have a wife, we will have it from us. Okay, now Muhammad, sorry, Muhammad, he tells us that Allah, if you want to get married, he will marry a woman from us. Okay, uh, maybe she's not a woman, we don't know, you know. But from us, okay, if Allah don't have a penis, Allah is going to use what in the night of wedding party? I will give you options. No, I better not. Use your imagination. So when the Muslim, they make a comment, you know, okay, hold on. There's a verse in the Quran. It says this. This is an answer for the comment. According to Muslims, the Holy Spirit of Allah came and appeared to Mary as a man, perfect man. Does this perfect man go to the bathroom? And when they ask Muhammad, okay, why we don't see your angel? Look what Muhammad, he said in chapter 17, verse number 95. I mean, look at this idiot. Say, say, okay, they are asking him what? Okay, they are asking him, Okay, how come you don't have miracles? How come you have nothing? I mean, you are an idiot of the village who keeps saying I'm a, a, a messenger, messenger, but you have no message and you have no miracles. As you see, they said to him, okay, uh, we shall not believe until you cause for us a spring to gush forth from the earth. Don't you Muslim, you say that when Hajar, she came to Mecca, Allah, he made the earth, the Zamzam, Zamzam, the, the, the spring of Zamzam, the Muslim, they claim that Hajar, the mother of Ishmael, she, you know, Allah, he made the water run for her. Okay. Who is a greater now, Hajar or Muhammad? They ask him, okay, you are a prophet. That's wonderful. All prophets have miracle. Wonderful. Can you do one? As an example, just make spring of water come from the ground. Or you know what? Make trees grow. You know, we are in the desert, desert. we need, we need, uh, you know. Uh, or make a river come. I mean, do something. Or you know what? They are counting by him, for him, by the way, all the miracles is counted before, in the, before generations. As an example, God, in the Quran, that Allah, he sent down to the Jews food from the sky. He sent them down, al man was salwa 
So they are saying to him, okay, you, you told us about prophets who came before. And those prophets, they have miracles. Choose one, which one you want. Make a spring of water for us or send food from heaven. Or send medicine from the sky, as the Quran says. Medicine for the eyes, you know. They used to use the the, the kama uh, uh, as a medicine. Uh, let me see if I can find the verse. Hold on. Remember, the topic is the miracle, the amazing miracle of Muhammad. And now we not talk about it. Just give me a few minutes. We will start there. <laughs> Oh boy. <coughs> oh, stupidity is amazing. Okay. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this is the hadith about, uh, you know, uh, about the benefit of the uh, those this kind of food. But let me show you. <clears throat> the reference for it. Let me try to find it. <sighs> so Allah he sent food Allah he sent feather Allah he sent whatever but when it's come to Muhammad Muhammad he can send down nothing he have no idea don't ask me I don't know Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, we delivered you from the enemy and we made a covenant with you on the right side of the mount. Okay. And we sent down Al Mannu wa Salwa. Do you see it? Okay. So the Arabs said to him, So all those things happened to Prophet before you. I mean, imagine Moses, he crossed the sea, Jesus, he went to heaven. Uh, uh, you know, you can tell us names. Food came from the sky. Jesus, he said, okay, uh, Allah sent me uh, seven sandwiches. Uh, each one of them have a wheel. And Allah, he sent big sandwiches. And the disciples, they start eating the wheel and everyone have a sandwich. When it's come to Muhammad, they ask him, Hey, Khabibi Muhammad, do you have any miracle? What Muhammad, he says? Uh... Uh, yeah, you know, um, look, look at the answer. If you do this, we will believe. Very simple. We will not believe until you do one of those. Make a spring come from the ground. Very simple. Is it hard for Allah to do that? All the miracle he did to the previous good men supposedly he sent. How come you have zero? Or until you have a garden of tree, or make a river run of it. Or you know what? You can send us food from the sky as what happened to uh, 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 to Moses, what happened to Jesus, what happened to all the ones before. Or you know what? Uh, or make, uh, make uh, you know, uh, a palace of gold and silver. Do something. Look what Muhammad said. What kept man back from belief? One guide that came to them was nothing but this. They said, has Allah sent a man like us? Look at this stupidity. 
So the Arab, they were complaining that Muhammad is a man like us, or they are complaining that he is an idiot, he can do nothing like us. Because all the prophets, they have miracles, and this is exposed the lies when they say, the Quran says that the Muhammad split the moon. Actually, nowhere in the Quran it says that anyone split the moon. The Quran says the judgment day is near and the moon split. Who split it? We do not know. Same time, it's a false prophecy because he said the judgment day is almost sight and nothing happened. This is 1400 years ago. Now Muhammad is going to get them busted. He says, see, see if they were settled on the earth angel walking about in peace and quiet, we should certainly have sent them down from the heaven and angel. Look at this stupidity. Allah saying he will send angels only if the one who is living in the earth is an angel. So who is Jibreel? Wasn't Jibreel an angel and he came to Muhammad and he came to Mary according to the Quran and he came as a perfect man? So my friend Abdul, I feel sorry for you. You asked for it, we gave you a shower you deserve. Now we go to the topic. Until now, we did not start the topic. Those who want to edit the video later, you can edit it later. And you can cut this part and make a different video. And now we will go to the amazing miracle of a prophet Muhammad. People, are you ready? You see, every Saturday, because people, they sleep all day. You don't find, like, we don't have too many. If it's different day, we will have a thousand something at least. Uh, but because it's Saturday, everybody is snoring. <laughs> Yeah, the men are sleeping dreaming about versions of Allah and the women are sleeping dreaming, dreaming about nice dress. Ah, okay. Now we will show you the amazing prophet. If you remember last time we played the video, the same video, uh, this guy, he confirmed to us that the prophet was lost. You remember the Muslim he called me? His name is Mustafa or Mustafa. So Mustafa, yeah, Mustafa, he called me and he says, yes, the prophet was lost. And we asked Mustafa, okay, the prophet at the age of 40, still he was lost. What was the religion he worshipped? He said, Allah. <laughs> so he was worshipping Allah, but he was lost. <laughs> and he did not know what faith is. So now we will continue. Yeah, today is a Friday. Sorry, today is a Friday. Uh, they are ah, it's a Friday night. Sorry, it's not Saturday. Unbelievable. It's it's Jibril. Look what Jibril did to me. Since I've been get squeezed three times, I lost the sense of calendar. So I, I apologize. I mean, those things never happen to you. So like, it's Friday. How you say it's Saturday? Even Allah don't make such a mistake. Like, what's wrong with you? Very embarrassing. <laughs> But this is the result of being squeezed hard, you know. But in my case, I wasn't squeezed by the Jibreel, you know, like the door of the van closed on me. You know, I mean, it's not really easy. I cannot explain to you how hard it is. Okay, so the Prophet, he became a Muslim at the age of 40. So the Muslim, they lie to us saying that Muhammad all his life was Abrahamic. All his life, a brother. This guy, he confirmed that he was not a Muslim. And we show you the verses yesterday, if you remember. Even in his presence, he speaks of him in the third person to honor him, alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah, he speak about Muhammad in the third person to honor him. Hold, hold on, hold on. Allah, he do what? Allah, he spoke about Muhammad as a third person to honor him. That's deep. I mean, all the squeezing in the world cannot explain this. To you, I use the second person. I don't use the third person. But Allah is talking to the Messenger, What does He say? I mean, look how stupid. Anyone who speaks Arabic, he knew. You cannot say, Amanta Rasul. That's a stupid donkey. So he have to say, Amanta Rasul. Even this one, they want to make a story about it. If you say, Amanta Rasul, people will laugh at you. Amanta Rasul. Hey, Amen the Rasul. He's talking to him directly. He didn't say you believe. He said the messenger believe. Oh, hold on, hold on. Did he, he's talking to him directly. Are you sure? I thought the Quran delivered to him by Jibreel. So how this is became directly now? If you notice with me here, 
not a single word can go without a comment. Do you understand why? When you listen to them, listen carefully. Don't be a fool who just listen and let things go. Stop every word they say and get them busted with it because every word they say it's a stupid. Allah spoke to him directly, you liar. So why you are saying revelation came by Jibreel then? Since when directly is as a letter or a message sent by an angel? This is not directly. Secondly, if you say I'm an Rasul, and he is saying now the prophet he became a believer, but this is something written before mankind, so this is just a lie. To explain to you more, if I write today, let us say uh, today is the year 2021, uh, and I will not make it Friday, I will make it Saturday because uh, as a prophet, I can make mistakes. I mean, to be a prophet, it's me to have license to make mistakes. So it's not a Friday, it's Saturday, okay? So, shut up, please, shut up. The Allah told me, it's a Saturday, not Friday. Okay? Anyone uh, have objection to the prophet? Nobody have objection, alhamdulillah. So if I say that Muhammad, he became a believer, and I write this today. And then my message delivered to Muhammad 3,000 years after. So how this is can be speaking directly and how this is can be a true news. Because when this is was written, it was a fake news. Because there was no Muhammad. And he did not believe. You see the stupidity? Continue. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa hadha takriman lil nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam. Even in his presence, he speaks of him in the third person his to presence. honor him alayhi salatu wa sallam. Allah the messenger is not just any messenger. Mm -hmm. The messenger believed. And Allah is letting him know that when Jibreel first came alayhi salam, when Jibreel first came, even the messenger had to accept Islam. Like <laughs> Brother sisters, the messenger became a Muslim. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> you know, we say somebody converted to Islam, yeah. somebody reverted to Islam, somebody uh -huh. took Shahada. Mm -hmm. Well, the messenger والسلام, also had to, in a sense, become Muslim uh -huh. when, the, when the angel came. So Muslims, this is the question we asked last time we went online. Uh, we are waiting for the answer. Muhammad became a Muslim, as you see, after the angel came. And this is the words of your sheikh, who is shaky. So what was his religion all the 40 years before that day? If there's any Muslim can tell us, please volunteer. We will be happy to hear you. Let us continue, because we want to show you the amazing miracle the Prophet he did. Amazing. <coughs> and that moment was a big moment. Big moment. Don't ask me how big it is. I mean, come on. You are a prophet and you have no idea and you've been squeezed. Mm. When the angel came, he has no idea what's going on. No idea. He has no clue what this is yet. You know, I hate to talk about the glue. Okay, hold on, hold on. But isn't it you Muslim you say that the prophet, he saw the angel before that day when his wife Khadija, she did a strap tease. Let us go and find the hadith. Give me a second. The only thing he said is true that Muhammad he have no clue. According to Muslims stories, reported from Khadija and Muhammad that Khadija she examined the, the angel who came to Muhammad. Let us put it in the screen. And again, we will not show you something is not approved by Muslims. This is the book of Asir al Nabawiyya, the Ibn Hisham, page number 239, volume number one. Page number 239, volume number one. Khadija and Muhammad, 
you know, wife and husband, they used to sit together in the bedroom. Muhammad, he told his wife, I see someone in the corner. Where? In the corner. Khadija, she said to him, obviously she cannot see him, only Muhammad, because the angel only can be seen by the Prophet. Okay, take a note, please. I mean, put yourself in the shoes of the Prophet. You are a Prophet now, and you became like uh, you can see things. Nobody can see it. The Prophet see it, you know. You have like you have a like a wilding eyes, you know, like I mean, you know, he can see person, person eyes. So it says here, reported from Khadija, may Allah bless her, that she said, "Oh my cousin, can you tell me about the friend who come to you? A friend he come to Muhammad. Take care." Take a note. A friend who come to Muhammad. Who is this friend? Let us see. Qala naam. He said, okay, yeah, I can tell you. She said, if he came to you again, tell me about him. And then Jibreel, he came to him. As you, he used to do. What he used to do? He sit in the corner of the room. And he, you know, take boogers from his nose. I mean, look at this angel. What's wrong with you? Why he is coming and sitting in the room saying nothing? And only Muhammad, he can see him. Obviously, Muhammad is a mentally ill. And he said to his wife, Khadija, he said, Oh, Khadija, this is Jibreel, he came to me. Like, hold on. How you say this is Jibreel came to you and you do not know who is this guy? I mean, the story is very written carefully. Remember, they are trying to find out who is this guy, but he said to her, this is Jibreel. <laughs> she said, okay, my cousin, Go and sit in the top of my right thigh, sorry, in my left thigh. And then she said to him, so he came, he sat in the top of her. And she said, do you see him? He said, yeah. She said to him, okay, stand up and sit in the top of my right thigh. And he did. She said to him, do you see him? He said, yeah. And then she asked him to sit in the top of her, in her lap. And he did. And she said to him, do you see him? He said, yeah. And then she took off her clothes. She took off her covering. And he is sitting in the top of her. And she said to him, do you see him? He said, no. She said, the glory to Allah. This is a good news. This is not Satan. I will post the link for you. Okay. And you can use Google Translation and save it as a reference so you can die laughing. This is the only prophet in the, any religion who was discovering his angel by his wife's striptease. Translate to English. Again, those are the reference as you see. The biography of the prophet Ibn Hisham, uh, variant number one, page number 239. This is a very Islamic website. And hear the story. She said to him, uh, okay, when you see him, okay, uh, tell me, do you see him? Uh, okay, sit in my left thigh. <laughs> do you see him? He said, yes. Sit in my right thigh. Do you see him? He said, yes. Sit in the top of me. Do you see him? He said, yes. She took off her clothes and she asked him, do you see him? He said, no. She said, the glory to Allah, this is not a demon. <laughs> Then, okay, brother, she took off her, her veil uh, and the messenger of Allah in the top of her. Okay, he was sitting in her lap. I mean, I want to see that view. Can a Muslim take a picture of this view? Muhammad sitting in the lap of his wife. And the wife, she is asking him, do you see him? The Prophet, uh, now because she took off her clothing, her cloth, uh, no. She said to him, my cousin, glory to Allah, this is not a Satan. This is an angel. See the translation here says king, you know. For, wrong translation for the word angel. <laughs> True prophet story. I mean, this is a story of a prophet all the way to the bones involving the lab of Khadija. I mean, guys, do you see the power of the lab of women? And did you notice why until now I'm not a prophet? Okay, now if an angel come to me and I don't have a wife, I'm going to sit in the lap of who? You tell me. Do you see what is missing? 
So the wife, she was doing a strap tease, sit in my right leg, sit in my left leg. Do you see him? Okay, sit in the top of me. Or do you see him? No, yeah, I see him. And now she take off her clothes. The Muslim, they say, oh, the reason she did that, because if it's a shaitan, he would like to watch porn. But Angel is shy. <laughs> you crazy Muslims. Don't you Muslim believe that the heaven, all of it is porn and, the, and there's angels there? I mean, what do you do in heaven of Allah? Nothing but porn, literally. Boom, boom. Even your orgasm is 70 years. Suddenly the angel is going to be shy if he, a woman, she is taking off her clothes, they want to do boom, boom. And uh, hold on, why Khadija should not start right away boom, boom, and if the angel is there, he will leave. Take off your clothes from what this is like. Sit in my right leg and left leg and sit in the top of me. And at the end, she take from the beginning, take off your clothes. I mean, what this is drama for? As long as she knew what will make him leave, it's not sitting in the right leg, it's not sitting in the left leg, it's not holding her breast. It is, uh, <clears throat> you know, do it. Hmm. Very smart religion. Stories are true. Anyway, now our friend here is going to tell us an amazing miracle. I'm sure all of you are waiting for it. When he's being shaken and he's being told, Iqra, read, read. He has no idea what's going on. <laughs> I mean, how I can play the coming morning for you? If I step the video every two seconds, shake him, he's shaking him, read, read. And the prophet, he had no idea. He got no idea. This is the only prophet who got no idea. Hey, Muslims, who's your prophet? Is the him the one who got no idea? Oh, the one who had no idea he came and became a prophet? Yes, he had no idea. Hmm. Why he's being shaked? No idea. The guy saying to him, read, he have no idea. Who have an idea? The guy in the video have an idea. Muhammad himself don't have an idea. I mean, do you see how this religion work? He have no idea. Tell us more. Hang on. Ma This is an incredible scene. And when when Rasulullah goes up to meet with Allah, Allah reminds him of that scene. Look at this. The messenger of Allah go up to Allah. Hold on, up where? Hey, I Muslims, I want you to tell me, please. Hey, up, up where? As I know, the earth flip upside down, and Muhammad he went up, as you call it, at night. So he wasn't going up because when the night is there, well, obviously he is. The earth is going down in the other way. Go to Google, see where the sun located, my friend. It's not up. Muhammad was going down. Secondly, when Muhammad he went up to Allah, did he meet Allah? Show us. Isn't it Aisha? She said, who, the one who said the Prophet he saw his his his, his Lord is lying. Hmm. He met Allah. Yeah, up, up, up where? <laughs> You know, the funny is, this guy, he say Arabic words when he's speaking to English people, I mean, people who don't speak Arabic. And here you wonder, when you say a sentence and nobody understands it, why you say it? And he don't even translate. Did he translate what he just said? No. They say those words to convince you that he is a scholar. He knew Arabic. I know somebody. He worked as an Imam in Al Bosnia and he is an Arab Christian those crazy desperate people they wanted an Imam and they heard that he is an Arab and he was looking for a job he cannot find a job so he accepted the job to be an Imam in a Muslim mosque in Al Bosnia and he was saying in Arabic Jesus is my God uh, blah, 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 you know, and those people, I mean, or whatever. I mean, nobody understands Arabic. I 
and this is the scenario for all those people. So he he throw from here and there some Arabic words to make them. I am a scholar. Tell us more. I want to arrive to the miracle, man. What is the miracle? That the messenger believed in what was revealed to him. Hmm. You know what's remarkable about that? Here we go. Get ready. Get your popcorn. Tell your friends. Call Joe Biden. You know the thing. Actually, if Joe Biden, he watched this, he will say, you know the thing for the rest of his life, non-stop. Like, you know the thing, you know the thing, you know the thing, you know the thing. He will not say it like once a while. He will say it every two seconds. He will become like a Rasul. Like, boing, boing, you know the thing, you know the thing, you know the thing, you know the thing. This is hilarious. This is amazing. This is beautiful. This is strong. This is extraordinary. Extraordinary. What kind of English is that? Anyway, let it go. In the beginning of the surah, what are the first words? Alif Lam Mim Thalik Al Kitab. Thalik Al Kitab. What does Alif Lam Mim mean, people? Stop. He's asking the people, the Muslims, what Alif Lam Mim mean? Alif Lam Mim is just letters for those who do not know. Like the letter when we read by itself, we say Alif, like A. It just we say Alif, we don't say A. So, okay, now Allah told him Alif Lam Mim. Okay, what is Alif Lam mean, people? He is asking the people. Listen carefully. The messenger believed in what was revealed to him. You know what's remarkable about that? Yeah, what is this? Tell us. In the beginning of the surah, what are the first words? Alif Lam Mim, Thalik Al Kitab. Uh huh. Thalik Al Kitab. What does Alif Lam Mim mean, people? Tell, tell us, people, tell us. What does it mean? What's it mean? ALM ALM <laughs> What does it mean? What's it mean? ALM Allah, Allah, Allah knows Allah knows <laughs> The teacher, he gave us the answer ALM? Hey people, what ALM ALM mean? People like, oh, nah. can I call a friend? Um, like the bees start calling each other, like bees, 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 bees. Uh, okay, now conclusion nobody knows. So, Allah delivered a message to Muhammad, and Muhammad himself did not know. That's deep. Allah said to Muhammad, ALM, and Muhammad shake his head, like, What? Like, what, what? And enter now, brothers and sisters. Nobody knows. Do you know the song? I made the song like 2,000, 3,000 years ago. It's called, Nobody knew, nobody knew, nobody knew, nobody, -da -da -dum. nobody, nobody knew, nobody knew, nobody knew, nobody, nobody knew, nobody knew. Nobody no nobody. Islam. The end of the movie. So Allah said to him, well, all life matters. <laughs> Genius. I mean, if you are a Muslim and you are listening to this conversation, shouldn't you be proud? Look at this. The Prophet being shaked, breaked, squeezed. And he believed. And then Allah said to him, ALM. What does that mean? Nobody knows. Religion of mystery. What happened is that Muhammad the thief, he was copying from the book of Waraqa ibn Nawfal. And Waraqa ibn Nawfal he learned from the Aramaic people. The Aramaic people, they put a symbolic letters, present words. In the beginning of the chapter they want to talk about and those they present what is the topic as an example if we go to the chapter 19 verse number 19 the one it says as an example Jesus is the Holy Son all right <clears throat> Jesus is a holy son. And by the way, this is for the Muslim who say, do Jesus go to the bathroom? Well, how come he go to the bathroom and yet your God consider him a holy son? 
if you go here in the beginning, it says, this is the verse number one, Kath ha ya ain sod. If we asked uh, Nu'aman Khan, what is this? He say, nobody know, nobody know, nobody know, nobody, da -da -dum. nobody, no, we know. This is letters written by the Aramaic people to summarize the chapter, which is, Christ is my Lord, is my God. This is what Kahyas mean. You go to the numbers, which is equal to the alphabet of the Aramaic or even the Arabic because it's a copy of it. And then you take each equal number and you come with the sentence, Christ is my God. So we knew. And you will notice that this word appear in the chapter of Mary, which make a lot of sense. The holy chapter is about Mary, supposedly, and Jesus. And what is the first sentence? Christ is my God. So the fool Muhammad was stealing from a book, and he stole what is written there. But he did not know what those words mean. All that he knew, they are letters. He took them, he put them as they are. This is why not a single Muslim, including Muhammad, can tell us what this is mean. Now we continue with the miracle. So Allah, he told Muhammad, Alif Lam Mim. And look at this guy, his eyes. He is so astonished. He's like, wow, that's deep. I just told them the secret of the heaven and the earth. Hmm. The messenger believed in what was revealed to him. Mm. Ali you know what's Salaam. remarkable about that? Yeah, what is? Tell us. In the beginning of the surah, what are the first words? Alif Lam Mim, Thalik Al Kitab. Thalik Al Kitab. What does Alif Lam Mim mean, people? What does it mean? Nobody knows. ALM? ALM? What does it mean? Allah, Allah, Allah knows. We don't know. You know why that's important? Why For many it? reasons. But tell us why. One of the reasons. Uh -huh is that before you study the Qur'an, the first thing you need to know is that you don't know anything. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm telling you, one day I'm going to die by heart attack here. What? What, what, what you just said? You need to know when you study Qur'an, you know nothing. What, what? No, I want to hear you again. What you say, what you say. What does it mean? Allah, Allah knows. Allah knows. You don't know. Mm -hmm. You know why that's important? Yeah, why? For many reasons. What reason? One of the reasons is that before you study the Quran, the first thing you need to know is oh. that you don't know anything. The first ayah tells you what you're worth. You're a piece of garbage. The first ayah it says to you, oh, what is what you worth? You know nothing. <laughs> Just deep. Just deep. Guys, I want to tell you something that just to show you how ignorant all of you. I mean, excuse me, okay? I mean, I don't mean to be rude with you. I mean, really, okay? But I'm going to do, I mean, <clears throat> uh, something. Oh, not this, hold on. Uh, I want to make a... Uh, uh, hold on, not this, what is this? Okay. Uh, let us use blue. If you open my book from the first chapter you will find I told you F D E anyone knows what does that mean nobody knows what I'm trying to say to you that you know nothing all of you
This is how I deliver my deep message. I just told you F D E. In different chapter, I'm going to say to you even something worse. T G B and I know now you will go crazy this is not only telling you you do not know and you are ignorant that is telling you you are worse of nothing not even a piece of paper And now it is time for you to know what I meant. After all those years, it's time to reveal my secret to you. Let me type it for you in the screen. You know the thing. And now all of you will be praising this amazing prophet. You know the thing, Joe Biden, peace upon him. <laughs> Shall we continue this coming moment? I mean, one moment is driving us crazy. We cannot finish it. We have to stop every second. This is hilarious. This is a religion, and those people, they come to those Western, you know, those Western, blue eyes, blonde. Don't think I'm making fun of you, of your look. No way, I mean, come on. I'm just saying, how they fool you? How they fool you? How somebody is born in the West, he have all the technology around him, computers, he can search, he can read. How someone, he convert to such a garbage cult? And then they use you for advertising to build a mosque or to convert people like you who they are silly, ignorant. This is religion. Allah told him, Alif Lam Me, and which means you are worth of nothing. But you just are stupid. If you just say it, nobody knows what it's meant. How you come to the conclusion Allah is saying to you, you are worth of nothing? Because if this is what Allah meant, that means you know the meaning. What does it mean? Allah, Allah knows. We don't know. You know why that's important? Mm. For many reasons. Many reasons. One of the reasons is that before you study the Quran, the first thing you need to know is that you don't know anything. That's the first thing. So the first ayah tells you what you're worth. You are nothing. You know? لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا. And if you don't have that attitude, you cannot understand the rest of the Quran. Forget it. <laughs> but if I understand this, did the Prophet وسلم, did he know how to read? Hold on, hold on. There's a Muslim he's saying, can the Christian explain, defend the contradiction in the Bible, in the Trinity? <laughs> My friend, the contradiction in the Quran. The Quran says the Christian, they believe that Jesus is Allah. And we ask the Muslims, who is the second person and the third person? Then we find that the Quran saying that the Christian worship Jesus and Mary and the Holy Spirit. So who is Allah? <laughs> Don't talk about contradiction, you idiot. Now let us continue. There's a miracle will happen. Allah told Muhammad al Iflamin. Jibreel squeeze Muhammad. Muhammad now is going to do a miracle. What is the miracle? Watch carefully. Take a note. <laughs> And Nabi al Ummi, you know, he doesn't know how to read. Now, when someone does not know how to read, the word Alif doesn't make any sense. What? What, 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 what he just said? When someone does not know how to read, the word Alif does not make any sense to him? <laughs> but you just said it doesn't make sense to you, you idiot, you! And you just said, not even a single Muslim until now knows what it means. 
So now he is preparing you for a miracle happen. Look, the prophet, he do not know how to read. So now what Alif Lam Mim will do to him? Listen carefully. وما كنت تطلب من قبله من كتاب وما تخطه بيمينك النبي الأمي you know he doesn't know how to read now when someone does not know how to read the word alif doesn't make any sense the word lam doesn't make any sense the word mim doesn't make any sense this is what happened when you put a donkey in the stage he just told us not a single Muslim knows what Alif Lam mean, mean, and now he is trying to make it a miracle because Muhammad did not know how to write, how to read, so it doesn't make sense. It's just a letter, you idiot. It doesn't make sense to you, it doesn't make sense to him. But listen carefully now what will happen. Because these are letters of the alphabet, and the only people who learn the alphabet are people who learn how to what? Read. Muhammad, he did not learn those letters. Muhammad, all his life, he don't use those letters. He don't speak. He don't use the word A, or the letter A, and the letter L, and the letter M. His name is Muhammad. All this two hours... To praise Muhammad for he was able to say A L M that's deep that is big actually how come we did not notice this if doesn't make any sense the word lam doesn't make any sense the word meme doesn't make any sense <laughs> Because these are letters of the alphabet. And the only people who learn the alphabet are people who learn how to what? Read. So the first thing that was given in the surah is reminding you that the messenger himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, has no clue how to read. He has no clue how to read. So he did not know the alphabet. He did not know what the letter alif is. He don't. He don't. He don't. That's it. And remember, the angel he was speaking, he was not writing for him. So the angel, he said to him, A-L-M. How Muhammad he can say A-L-M? Listen carefully. Read, and yet out of his mouth comes the word Alif, Lam, Mim, which is impossible for someone who doesn't read. It's impossible for someone who cannot read to say A-L-M. Repeating after the angel, it's impossible. People, are you taking note? How many of you are going to convert to Islam now because of this amazing miracle? If Muhammad did not know how to write, how to read, give me some tissue. <laughs> he didn't know how to read. How he can repeat after the angel? The angel, he said to him, Muhammad say, A, Muhammad he repeat, A, the angel said, okay, say L, Muhammad he said, L, the angel he said, say M, Muhammad he said, M, and that is amazing miracle, how he can do it, I mean how, people, wake up, it is time, it's like light, it's a real miracle, so while Jesus made someone dead come from the grave after three days, Muhammad was able to repeat, A. Hey. Jesus walked in the street, he made the blind see. Muhammad was able to say, L. J. <laughs> Oh boy, how many of you hate me? I assure you that people, they watch the videos and nobody notice how stupid it is. I mean, look, there's a million and five hundred thousand people watch the video. Not a single comment is negative. 
Not a single Muslim said to him, hey, hold, hold on, hold on, what are you talking about? So the Prophet, he say, ALM, that is a miracle. Well, that would be a miracle if he was a mute. He is just repeating a language he speak every day. The man is already 40 years old. He speak Arabic very well. So if he repeat letters which is in his language, that make it amazing miracle because how he can do it. He is illiterate. Do you see how much they worship him and they fabricate miracles about him? Even such a stupid, silly thing, they make it a miracle because they are bankrupt. How he can do that? And if you don't have that attitude, you cannot understand the rest of the Quran. Forget it. But you might understand this. Did the Prophet وسلم, did he know how to read? No. You know, he doesn't know how to read. Now when someone does not know how to read, the word alif doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. The word lam doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. The word meme doesn't make any sense. Because these are letters of the alphabet. And the only people who learn the alphabet are people who learn how to what? Read. So the first thing that was given in the surah is reminding you that the messenger himself والسلام, has no clue how to read and yet out of his mouth comes the word alif, lam, meme which is impossible for someone who doesn't read. That's it's impossible who doesn't read. But he did not read anyway, you idiot. He repeated what the angel said. Secondly, how the stupid angel, he said to him, read. Oh, sorry, the stupid Allah because it's Allah who is saying that. He is saying, read to Muhammad, and Muhammad do not know how to read. Do you see the big mistake in this stupid story? Allah, he sent an angel, and the angel is just saying what Allah said. Not angel is not speaking. Angel is just delivering what Allah said, supposedly. So if Allah is saying to Muhammad, read, and Muhammad do not know how to read, who is the stupid here? Okay. After Allah, he said to Muhammad, read. Did Muhammad learn how to read? No. First of all, did he give him a book anyway to read? No. So this is a stupid Arabic word used in the wrong location. Because I shall not say to you read unless I'm asking you to read something. If I'm asking you to recite or repeat, recite is something from the memory. Repeating is something after me. So what does this have to do with being able to read or not to read? You are repeating. And that's what happened in the story. Do you see how stupid this religion is? Secondly, just to show you how ignorant the Mohammedan, we the Arab Christians is the one who got them busted non-stop since the time of Islam. He just said that the Prophet is a Nabi al ummi Al ummi is Gomai, the one who is from different nation, the one who is not from the believers. Have nothing to do with knowing how to write, how to read. How we can prove that easy from the stupid Quran. If we go to the stupid Quran, the yellow pages of Muhammad, we will find the following. <clears throat> All right. Chapter 2, verse number 78. The Quran is even giving definition who is illiterate. This is a stupid cult. And those who follow it, they are drunk. They cannot even explain their own religion. They cannot understand their own book. Why? Read carefully. And they are among them illiterate who know not the book. So do you see what the word illiterate mean? Illiterate is not somebody do not know how to write, how to read. It's somebody is illiterate about the book of God. So anyone who is not learned about the book of God, he is illiterate. Not someone who do not know how to read and how to write. I mean, how simple it is. 
Let us show you more verses to show you how stupid this religion is again. So if they dispute with thee, say, I have submitted my soul or surrendered my soul to Allah and, and, and so to have to those who follow me and say to the people of the book and those who they are illiterate. This is the word Umiyin. You see it? Umiyin is unlearned. Learned about what? About the book. This is why we Christians are called people of the book. Those who don't have a book, they are called Ummiyin. So the silly Muhammad was saying, there's a Gomai, there's people who they are from other nations who don't believe in God. They are illiterate. The Christians, the Jews are learned. Is it possible that every Christian at that time, he know how to write, how to read? That's impossible. Yet we are called the people of the book. So the Quran differentiate between illiterate and people of the book. People of the book are learned about God, illiterate people who do not know the true God, and Muhammad is one of them. And this is again confirmed, as the guy said, Muhammad had no idea, and then he became a Muslim when he was 40 years old, for he was Ummi. He is illiterate about the book. He do not know the book of God. And every single verse in the Quran says the people of the book confirm that we are the people of the book, which means Muslims have no book. It's in the front of you. We are. Are you Muslims people of the book? No. Because even when Muhammad died, you have no book. And if our book is corrupt as some Muhammad and they say, which is against the Quran statement, then how we are called people of the book if we don't have a book no more? Stupid statement. But I wanted to show you in this video how much they praise this man even for such a silly, stupid thing that he was able to repeat ALM. How he can do that? How someone who do not know how to write, how to read, he was able to repeat after the angel. The angel said, A, hey, Muhammad, he said, A. Hey. How that is possible for someone who do not know how to read and how to write? You stupid, he was repeating. What does this have to do? A kid, he is two years old, he can repeat it. Mama. <laughs> Brothers, how how this can happen? How someone do not know how to write, how to read? He was able to to not to read, to repeat. Because according to Muslims, Muhammad he dies still he cannot read and write. So Jesus make people come from the grave. It's not a big deal. Muhammad. Okay, let us do this. We put in the in the left Jesus or in the right Jesus and the left Muhammad. Jesus, what do you do? I mean, the people come from the grave, from the death. Oh, okay. Muhammad, what you can do? I said, hey! <whistles> Jesus, sorry. Muhammad is the winner this time. Jesus, your turn. What you can do? Um, in the Quran it says, I created from the mother bird and I breathe into it and I make it living bird. I create creatures, you know, as God he do. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Muhammad, your turn. What you did? I said, ill. <sighs> Sorry, Jesus, you lost this time too. Muhammad is the winner this time. So until now, Muhammad is two to zero to Jesus. Okay, Jesus, your turn. Tell us something unique about you. Um, you know, I heal the leper, I make the blind see, I walk in water, I am now in heaven. Okay, okay, Jesus, stop. I mean, come on, are you going to keep going? Enough. Muhammad, what you can do? I said, Im. <whistles> Sorry, Jesus. Three to Muhammad, zero to Jesus. Muhammad is the winner. Who can do that save Prophet of Allah Muhammad? He was able to repeat A-L-M. 
Think about it. This is not a joke, my brother and sisters. This is a miracle. How he can do that? Look at his face. Look, 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 look. He is shocked that the prophet was able to repeat A-L-M. My voice became saggy. Okay, my voice became saggy. Go to sleep. Guys, my voice became saggy. Hello. It's you looking for my voice became saggy. Are you here for my voice or for the, what we're teaching? People who learn how to what? Read. So the first thing that was given in the surah is reminding you that the messenger himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, has no clue how to read, and yet out of his mouth comes the word alif, lam, meme, which is impossible for someone who doesn't read. That's like saying somebody doesn't know anything about English, they don't know any alphabet, they don't know any reading, but they say W. He didn't know anything about English, he said W. So if I say to you, repeat after me, W, you cannot do that. Because simply you know nothing about English. It's impossible. How this is going to happen? We have to be honest that those things are mission impossible. A moment of truth. I would like to buy a hamburger. 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 No, no, no. Let's break it down. I, 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 I would, would, see, would. It's impossible. Would, 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 would. 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 It's impossible. I'm too. Hello. Like, 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 like. Two. 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 See, I just told you. Here we go. A French guy. He cannot say W. And he is a detect detective, a real one. This is true. Do you see how impossible the mission is? What's wrong with you people? This is a true story, you know. The, so Muhammad is the Pink Panther, but because he got the support of Allah, the Pink Panther Muhammad, he was able to say A L M in his own language. <laughs> That's deep. Sometime, sometime like you feel amazed with the Prophet Muhammad. As you see, we have tons of proofs that those things are impossible. Bye. Bye. B. Bye. Bye. B. 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 A. 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 Hamburger. 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 <laughs> so the angel came to Muhammad and he said to him, Say Dumburger. Muhammad was able to say Dumburger. He didn't even say to him a word. He said to him, A L M. A L M in his own letter of the language he speaks. And that is a miracle. Now I know those Christians, you know, and the Jews and Hindus, you know, they, they will laugh, huh? Okay, wait for Allah when He burn you in the hellfire. Just wait. When Allah He bit you, He, he put the the, the the chain, as the Quran says, He insert a chain in your anus. Just wait for that day is coming. And if you don't have that attitude, you cannot understand the rest of the Quran. Forget it. 
But understand this, did the Prophet وسلم, did he know how to read? No. And the Ummi, you know, he doesn't know how to read. Now when someone does not know how to read, the word Alif doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. The word Lam doesn't, doesn't make, make any, any sense. sense. The word Meem doesn't, doesn't make, make any, any sense. sense. Because these are letters of the alphabet. And the only people who learn the alphabet are people who learn how to what? Read. So the first thing that was given in the surah is reminding you that the messenger himself والسلام, has no clue how to read and yet out of his mouth comes the word Alif, Lam, Meem. I wonder how Muhammad was living all his life. He said to his Khadija, Hey Khadija, Uridu an akul at How he was able to say the letter A in Urid? How he was able to say the letter L in Al Ta'am? And he was able to say the letter M in the Ta'am. He said to her, I want to eat food. And this would sentence have three letters A L M. How he was able to do that before he became a prophet? All his life, he's repeating those letters. <laughs> this is what happens if you are a person who worship an idol. Muslims are idol worshippers. They praise their God Muhammad, and this is why even they change his name from Qatham ibn Abdullah to Muhammad the praised one. The name of Muhammad alone is enough to prove that Muslims are pagan people worshipping a false man. The second you call him the praised one, then you need to ask yourself, if Muhammad is the praised one, who is the praised to? Allah? They worship him and they try to idolize him. And you notice who dare to laugh, who dare to question, who dare not to believe, you don't, we cut your throat. This is what Islam is about. I'm going to stop here because if you want to finish this video, it's going to take me a century because every every second he say, I have to stop and we laugh and we die laughing. So I better stop here. Don't forget, please to download the video because we don't keep them for long. And the Muslims are really upset upset English is funny by the way upset what this have to do with being un unhappy upset huh yeah it's a word coming from the cowboy the cowboy when he sat in the top of the horse the wild horse the horse go crazy so they start using the word upset and by the way how I was able to repeat the word upset That's a miracle. Remember, if you are a person from Bangladesh, you cannot say the word, the letter W. It's impossible. If you are from Thailand, you cannot say W. It's impossible. But Muhammad is from Arabia and he speaks Arabic and he repeated letters he used every day, all his life. That is impossible. How you can do that? So I invite you to believe in the Prophet. His name is Mumu, and he is amazing. He did a lot of miracles, and as you see, we made a competition between him and uh, uh, the Christian God. Huh? And the Christian God, he lost because uh, the Christian God he can make people raise from grave. So, so what? Uh, Muhammad he can say, "Hey, the Christian God he." Raise, you know, he make a blind see and he heal the leper and uh, people touch him, they get healed. Uh, uh, so what? Muhammad, he say L. Actually, based in what we learn today, Muhammad is the founder of the statement, all life matters. A-L-M. A. L. M. All life matter. Or maybe, I don't know, let me guess another. Uh, uh, all love 
matter. Uh, that's better. All, uh, all, uh, uh, Lamborghini, and I don't know. I mean, I mean, you can use your imagination. All right, that's deep. That's deep, and there's nobody can do that. Nobody can repeat those slow slow three letters. Save the Prophet of Allah. It's impossible. Think about it carefully. Be honest with yourself, and you will notice that there is no one like the Prophet of Allah. He is you and Nick. He's a lot of you. And the Nick about him is very Nike, Nike, you know, whatever. I mean, he's very unique. And this is, I think, today is enough for anyone who watched this video to see that he is really true prophet. He was able to do things which nobody can do. Yet he was a pagan for the last 40 years of his life. And guess what? In the Quran, Jesus, he said, in the cradle, I am messenger of Allah. So while Muhammad was worshipping the false gods, according to this guy, and according to the Quran, for 40 years, from the first second Jesus when he was born, from the Quran saying, I am the messenger of Allah. Do you see the difference? While Jesus is the son of a pure woman, her name is Mary, Muhammad, he says, وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسِ those who they are polytheists, they are Najis, and that is his father and his mother. So Muhammad is son of filthy family, while Jesus is born of a pure woman. And who is his father? That's a question Muslims cannot answer. With this, I want to say thank you very much for being here with us. I hope you have a good time. Don't forget, please, to download the video, share it with your friends. As you know, we don't keep them, download them, share them, store them, eat them, do whatever you want to do with them. And I advise you from now on to practice saying www.com because if you can say W and you don't speak English, obviously you are a messenger of Allah. And this is very obvious. So uh, with this miracle, I wish you a great uh, Friday and I uh, wish, wish you a great uh, Saturday. And uh, don't try to practice to say ALM, because as you see, this is impossible. Only Prophet of Allah, he can do it and he can say it. Don't waste your time. It is above your grade. And you will not understand it. And uh, now I'm going to go and join the English school uh, to say hamburger. Ham. Ham. I would like to buy a hamburger. <coughs> I would like to buy a hamburger. <coughs> it's not damburger. It's a damburger. You like it or not? The prophet says so. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you and see you soon. Take care. Christ is Lord. Islam is a joke and we prove it every day. Thanks.